but let's talk about choosing the right container for your houseplant. When I worked at a greenhouse, people came in all the time with sick looking plants or just a sad story about a plant that didn't make it. And a ton of the time, it all came down to container choice. You can buy a perfectly healthy plant, but doom it from day one by how and what you plant it in. So let's take a look at some of the options and materials out there. There's clay, plastic, porcelain or ceramic, concrete, metal, and with refreshed popularity, woven baskets. With all of these containers and with any container, the most important thing that you need for plant success is drainage. I know for a lot of you that might not be what you want to hear for a number of reasons. Like maybe you already have a container picked out and it doesn't have drainage, or maybe you're putting your plant on a piece of furniture or on carpet and you don't want to risk any chance of water damage. Or maybe you think your only option for a container with drainage is a dinky looking plastic saucer. All those are valid reasons, but I'm going to show you some different ways that I keep my own house plants so that you can have healthy, happy plants, you can keep your containers nice, and you can have a sleek looking arrangement all at the same time and keep that original look that you were going for. Before we go over each different type of container, there's a couple of things you should know. Number one is staging. Staging plants means that you make it look like it's planted in the decorative container, but in all actuality, it's just sitting inside of it. Staged plants are usually kept in a plastic grow pot with a saucer underneath them, and then if necessary, bumped up if the pot is a little tall, wedged in if the pot is a little wide, or covered up with decorative moss if needs be, so you're not looking at a ton of plastic and foam. Sometimes staging is as easy as just putting a pot in another pot, other times it can be more involved, like this. The biggest pro of staging is that your decorative container is essentially untouched and it makes it easy to swap out what plant goes in that container. The second thing you should know is how to make your own drainage because it's pretty freaking easy. What you will need is a drill and a glass and tile drill bit. Here's mine. It's Bosch brand. I got it from Home Depot. It's been awesome so far. There's plenty of videos online for how to do this, but essentially you've got a flat hard surface, a towel, your container bottom facing up, and then you have your drill and a spray bottle with water at the ready. You'll continually spray water on the spot or spots that you are drilling and you'll wanna drill through at a 90 degree angle. Try this out on a test container first to get a feel for it before you do this on an expensive container that you bought. The last thing to consider is that the size or shape of your container may make your decision for you when it comes to drainage. For example, I have this container in two sizes. The smaller one, I immediately drilled a hole in the bottom and planted my agla directly in it. I knew I had a saucer that fit well and wasn't too noticeable, so I just went for it. The bigger size, however, I left alone because once I actually thought about it, I knew that once I drilled the hole and planted a plant directly into it, it would be so heavy and it would be a pain to water, it would be a pain to make any changes, and it would be difficult to find a saucer in that size. Shape can be another determining factor. For example, this concrete planter is like a way fun, cute shape, and that's why I bought it. But saucers don't come in this shape, and so putting a saucer underneath it doesn't look too sleek. There's lots of open space, pretty noticeable. Um, and that led me to decide on staging for this particular container. So size and shape can make your decision for you for sure. All right, now let's get to our different options. First, we have clay pottery. Clay is a common option for houseplants. You can get them in some different colors, but the most common is the orange terracotta pot. What's awesome about clay containers is that they are typically very affordable. They usually come with drainage holes already and sometimes they come with a matching saucer to boot, which is a lot cuter than just a plastic one, right? When using clay pottery, I always plant directly into the container, and the only negative thing about clay pots is that water does soak into the clay a little bit, which means it's not totally safe to just set it on a surface without a saucer, even if your pot had no holes in it at all. Plastic pots are extremely common and are another type that typically comes with the drainage holes already in place. They're easy to find and affordable, and if you have plants, you will likely have plenty of plastic containers, whether they are decorative or just the grow pots that you're staging in other 
decorative containers. Plant directly, and whether you are staging or using plastic as your final container, a saucer is pretty much inevitable. Porcelain and ceramic are also very common. I am definitely way too cheap to buy any real porcelain, but if I did buy it, I probably wouldn't trust myself to drill any holes in something so nice, so I'd probably go with staging. However, ceramic can go both ways, whether you want to stage it or drill your own drainage. What you'll want to do is consider the size of the container, the weight of the container, the saucer that would be needed if it did have drainage, if you would ever want to use this container for something else, where the container is going to live and on what surface, and basically what is going to be easier for you in the long run, staging or drilling drainage. So just use your best discretion when it comes to ceramic containers. Concrete is one of my favorite materials for planters. I love that it can be made into different shapes and the modern look that it can give to traditional plants. Concrete is similar to clay in the fact that it does absorb some water, which can make it a little scary to set on nice furniture without a saucer. However, unlike clay, you don't see a ton of concrete planters that come with a matching saucer. It just doesn't seem to be part of the look. And for that reason, I typically go with staging when it comes to concrete. When I bought this particular pot, I had this calathea in mind to go into it. However, as you can see, it doesn't fit. When I saw that, I was very tempted to just plant directly into the pot, but I knew that in the long run I would probably regret it. So either I find a smaller grow pot for this guy, or I choose a different plant that already fits. Brass totally started making a comeback a few years ago, which is why I started buying some metal containers. Always, always, always go with staging when using metal. Even though you might want to plant directly for one reason or another, don't do it. You want your plant in its own separate plastic container, and you want a sturdy saucer to keep any water from touching metal. This is what happens when you plant directly into metal. It's not great for the plant. Your container will eventually start to rust out like this one, which has even started going through to the other side and you will be way bummed out when you have to throw your beautiful brass container in the trash, which will be inevitable if you are putting wet soil into it. Obviously, the shape of this planter is just a problem for functionality. Um, it's not so easy to just put a grow pot in this thing, but if I was going to do it over, I could have taken some other steps to preserve it. So, always remember staging with metal. The last type of container is a woven basket, and I wanted to talk about these because they are just so popular right now. Pretty sure because of Joanna Gaines, and I'm totally on board because I think it's a really cute trend. Baskets like metal are something that you really don't want to plant directly into. You'll want to have a saucer in between your plant and the basket, and you'll want to think ahead a little bit which I didn't do to make sure that your basket isn't way bigger than your grow pot because it honestly just looks kind of ridiculous. For this one, I will be finding myself a bigger grow pot for this guy or maybe I will just have to go buy a nice big bird of paradise or something to fill in that space. So there you have it. Lots of different ways to house and display your house plants. I hope this video helps you make good container choices and leads you to having some success with your houseplants.